today's lecture, we are going to focus on about couple of last parameters of the op-amp. Okay, we, we covered many, many different, different uh, specifications of the op-amp. And the last one, what was the last one we did? Um, slew rate. Okay, so you have studied the slew rate, I'm assuming in the exam for preparation. So I'm assuming it's all fresh in your mind. So I'll focus on one particular thing. Um, this particular op-amp, let's say, right, if we are using for slew rate, what is the slew rate decided by? Huh? Bias current and the capacitor CL, right? I bias by CL. So then if we want to improve slew rate, let's say you are designing an A to D converter, which is super high speed. So if you are super high speed, means you have very short amount of time to settle. Okay, which means, uh, what do you have to do then? What would you do? You will just, there is no other, uh, other uh, remedy at your disposal other than increasing I bias. Is that clear? So you just jack up the I bias as much as possible. And then what will happen if you jack up the I bias? Power dissipation, your power dissipation will go up. So then uh, this idea uh, that came about, um, you know, as I'm describing the problem to you, uh, was pretty interesting uh, at that time. So what if, what if, think about that. I mean, I'm just giving you a thought experiment here. What if I'm able to change this I bias only when I need it? Think about that. So it's like, you know, you have a bank account, and you get money only when you need it type of thing. You know, suppose uh, your father sends you money for your, um, I mean, maybe your mother, huh? you know, uh, she sends you money for your uh, tuition fees. But she will not give you all that money in one chunk. Uh, otherwise, you'll be dissipating a lot of power. Um, she will send you only when you need it, only when, you know, you need to, you need to pay the tuition fee. Similarly, here, you, you, you have this I bias, you bump it up only when you need it. So you have to detect the situation. What is the situation we have to detect? We have to detect the situation where we are going to slew. Okay. When does slewing happen? Only, only when there is a large difference in inputs. Okay. And you have to really get the, get somewhere super fast. Okay. Agree? Okay. So then um, now let's figure out the circuit to do that. Okay. So what we are trying to do is... Um, So it's a very complicated circuit, but I bet you by, by the end of this class, you will be able to, um, you will be able to draw this circuit and, you know, easily. That's my intent. All right, so this is my output here, um, and this is the capacitor CL. So it's a one stage OTA right now, and the gain will be GMR out. But I'm just giving you an example uh, to start with, okay? So um, let's say this is um, M1 and M2. If V out is positive, then we reverse back. Uh, so this would be, let's try this out. This is a positive input. This will be negative. This will be negative and this will be positive. Okay. So to go around the loop and looks okay, right? Okay. So this is a positive input. This is a negative input. Okay. And let's say when I, uh, this is my I, um, ISS. So if, if you, if you raise this voltage high and if you raise drop this voltage down, uh, which transistor will conduct? M2 will conduct, right? And M2 will conduct and the entire current will be, um, will be dumped here. This will be ISS and there will be no current in this bottom branch. This you have learned, right? You have figured this out. Okay. So, and then your slew rate is going to be ISS divided by CL. Is that clear? Okay. Now, um, so what we want to do is we want to detect this situation. So we want to bump up this ISS only when this situation comes into play. And rest of the time, we'll just have our ISS, small signal noise, right? So how do we do that? So I want you to draw a very simple circuit. Hmm? 
so just two current minutes. And you can see a simple circuit like this can solve a huge problem. Okay, so let's say I'm putting in Ix and let's say I'm putting in Iy here. Hmm? So it's just two current minutes. So this is 1 is to 1 and this is 1 is to k, let's say. Hmm? And what is my I0? Let's analyze this circuit. Can somebody help me with this? Heth? Yeah, what would be the current in this branch? Ix, because it's a current mirror. And what would be the current in this branch? Iy huh. minus Ix. Everybody agrees, right? And that's what the current will be, Iy minus Ix. Agreed? So we got a difference current between the two and uh, that's what we desired, right? If, if the difference between the two currents is large, then, um, then we can get this. Now tell me, if Ix is greater than Iy, what happens? So, if Ix is greater, then Ix is trying to pull more current uh, from this transistor. Um, let's call this M1, M2, hmm, M3 and M4. Agree? If Ix is greater than Iy, then what will be the current, you know, in M3? Zero. So, uh, M3 current is equal to zero. Are you convinced about this, everyone? Because um, Ix cannot reach uh, to that level, okay? It will take all the Iy current and it will go through M2, all right? And the voltage, gate voltage, uh, the, the drain voltage will start dropping all the way to M3 will be at a, at a verge of, uh, you know, there is no current in that transistor. That's what will happen. Is this part clear? Because this is the critical aspect. Hmm? Yeah, anyone? KCL won't be on this node? Okay, excellent question. Um, yeah, I mean, you tell me. So, I'm not saying that this will carry. Okay, let's redo this. Uh, it's a good question. So, what uh, Vasu is saying is that I'm putting in Ix and I'm putting in Iy. I'm trying to put in Iy. Hmm? However, what will happen? Will this become Ix? is the quick, quick, quick question. It will not be Ix. Uh, it will just become Iy. Hmm? So this will become Iy. Okay. And although the gate voltage is the same as on, on the left side, the drain voltage will start dropping. Huh? And the drain voltage will drop almost close to uh, VDSAT. Okay. Till the point that um, the entire Iy is diverted into M2. And there is a, this current will be equal to 0. And then there'll be so. So if we plot this transfer function, it's going to look like this, hmm? something like this. Are you with me on this? Okay. The transfer function will be so. This is um, uh, I out, hmm? and this is uh, when uh, uh, this is I I Y minus I X. Okay. So this happens only when uh, Ix um, or Iy is greater than Ix. Okay. Similarly, think about the other way around. So let's say I put this in a box hmm? and let's just label these two currents. Hmm? Let's call this. Iy. And this will be my, and if I, uh, if I extend this further, let's say we have k, then what will happen? This current will become uh, k times Iy minus Ix, correct? So k is like a scaling factor if I want to increase uh, more than the delta, okay? So this would be um, k times Iy minus Ix. Okay. Now, how do we use this particular circuit? Because this only operates in one, uh, one side. Okay. So, I can replicate this circuit one more time. Hmm? 
and then I can flip the direction of the current on the top and then I can get k times um, you know the difference uh, the, the other side okay so I'm going to show you how this circuit works okay so imagine this thing in a box first now first of all okay just keep this in your mind if I use this circuit and uh, let's call this node these are the three nodes so let me clear this up and first of all how do I get get these two currents so what is this will be uh, I1 and this will be I2, okay. What we want to figure out is, uh, we, we want to get copies of these two currents I1 and I2, agree? And then we want to figure out who is bigger than whom. And then when they are bigger, then we would like to, um, you know, bump up our ISS. That's all we are trying to do, okay. So, easy to get copies. We already have a mirror. We already have a gate voltage. So, I can get another copy here. And I think all of you know what this means, right? Okay, so what will be these two currents? If the, if the ratios are equal, this will be I1 and this will be also I1. Similarly, I can do the same thing here. Is this part clear to you, what I did? Right now they are floating, I have not connected them. This will be I2 and I2. Okay. And then what I will do is I will put this dabba here and note how I am uh, I am using using this uh, thing. It's called right now it's I X I Y. Okay. And uh, what was our K times I Y minus I X? That was our transfer function. And similarly, I will do the same thing on this side. Hmm? Here also I will say. I y, I x and then k times I y minus I x. So identical circuit. Hmm? Now there is one thing I want you to uh, pay attention to as an analog designer or RF designer or a mixer, you are a special breed. Okay? So uh, you need to draw your schematics uh, very well. Okay, so one one would do uh, one could dis draw this schematic by taking these two circuits and you know dumping them there, and then you would make a spaghetti type of structure. But you should not do that because it will be very hard to understand. Okay, so the one lesson that I want you to learn from this is how do you draw schematics? So you 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 draw this schematic, the one that's below here, and you put it inside a box. It's called a symbol, and I think all that stuff you're going to learn as you go through your project. I think you're already doing that, aren't you? In your uh, first, uh, uh, the second assignment, you already did that. You put it inside a box and there were some terminals, right? Because imagine the circuit, you draw every transistor on the same sheet. It'll be, you'll be crazy, okay? So, so you, you put this inside a box and then, uh, then you create this particular symbol for our uh, schematic, okay? And then, uh, then you could uh, also do, uh, for example, in the, in, the, in the left side, let's say I connect it. And the right side, I connected here. And on the other side, I connected this, something like this, something like this. Okay, so first advice is don't do that. So I want to show you how badly it looks and then I can teach you how to do a good job. Right, so first let's go through the analysis of this. The analysis of this is what this one is, I1 and this right side is I2. Is that part clear? Okay, so what should be the current coming out of here? K times I2 minus I1. Agreed? And on the on the on the right side, what would be the current? K times huh? I1 minus I2. Is this part clear? Okay, just because I have flipped the connection. And then I can add this um, current here and here okay so imagine now what is going on if the positive you know goes up and negative goes down what will happen huh. if the positive voltage goes up suddenly so where will the current flow iss m2 right huh. 
it will flow through M2, which means I2 will be equal to ISS and I1 will be equal to 0 at the first instant, right? So if I2 is greater than I1, I1 is 0, I2 is equal to ISS. Which left side or right side? Which one will kick in? Left side will kick in. Okay. So uh, left side will kick in and give you what? K times ISS. Do you see that? Is that is that clear? The left side is going to give me K times ISS. And if K is greater than 1, what's going on? Suddenly my ISS is jacking up. Okay, so um, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around this. So think about, uh, you know, step by step, uh, instant by instant. I mean, generally it doesn't happen that, that way. It will just, it will just go up. The current will go up and you will, um, you will, you will get a good slew rate. Basically you, okay. All right. Uh, so let's say it's two times ISS. K is equal to two. Okay. So, um, so Fozan, tell me what will happen in, uh, as soon as the uh, M2 goes up. At that instant, um, I2 will be equal to ISS. Then what will happen? So, what I'm saying is that positive uh, side goes up. So, ISS is flowing through, uh, I2 becomes ISS. Then what will be the next thing that will happen? K equal to 2. Hmm? At that next instant, this will become 2 times ISS. Agreed? And then what will be the total bias current on the bottom? 3 times ISS. Okay, so 3 times ISS is equal to I2 now. Okay, and that will again go through our thing. It will become 6 times ISS. And what will be the total current? 7 times ISS. And it will keep going on like that. Okay, because there is no control. Is that clear? Okay, now you may say that, hey, this doesn't make any sense because it will just go to infinity, right? But that doesn't happen. Because what is going on is as the as the current starts increasing, the difference in the voltages, uh, okay? Because this thing is going to be in a feedback; it's an op amp, right? If you have a um, if you have some kind of feedback like uh, like this, right? plus minus, then uh, the feedback will bring it uh, very close. So delta V will start reducing, hmm? and then as the delta V starts reducing, this action will get controlled. Okay, the de delta, the, the I2 minus I1 or I1 minus I2 will start reducing. And then you will reach when, uh, when these two voltages, uh, V plus and V minus, they're equal. Again, it will go back to ISS. Hmm? So that's kind of a way to understand this problem. So uh, since I kind of showed you how not to do this, let me show you how to do this, right? So this is a bad way to draw the schematic. And um, if you draw too many things, uh, in your in your schematics, right? Your brain cannot process so many connections. Okay, so um, let's say you know you did not draw this properly. You just drew all sorts of you know kinks in your wires and everything. The circuit may work, um, but uh, you know you will have you will have an issue understanding the schematic. Okay, so what you generally do is the following: you will you will label these nodes. Okay, A. And let's say this is a B node. Hmm. Labeling is just you um, you cue on that that particular wire if you know what you do in the cadence, and you just label that node. Huh? How do I connect here? Okay, so um, ISS is another transistor. Okay, and it's coming from your main bias current. You remember, so you you have a master bias coming, and then you have a current mirror coming. So that is going to continue supplying ISS. What matters is how much total current is flowing through, the tail current is modified. Okay, maybe, maybe I, will, uh, I will kind of um, detail it out a little bit, okay. So I think this is where you are getting stuck. So this is, uh, this is some V bias coming from somewhere else, okay, and you will carry, as a result of which this will carry ISS. Okay, he will carry, keep carrying ISS. Okay, because uh, the drain voltage is set, um, you know, higher. It's not going, it's not being turned off because one side is going up like this, right? So that voltage will get lifted up. Is that your question? What your question is? No, so far are you okay? No? Then I will take the next step. Okay, now you are also following that I2 will be equal to ISS at the next step. I1 will be equal to zero because the whole current is steered one way. And then one of the left side or right side, one of the boxes will kick in. 
I like to call them mod circuits. So these are all mod circuit. Okay, so this creates a mod. Very cheap way of creating a mod. Mod means um, I one minus I two mod of that is what gets multiplied k times, and that's uh, that's what should be. So each one of them contains two current mirrors, hmm? and that way. Is it clear now? Because uh, what is k times I two uh, I x minus I y? It looks like this also. It looks like this. Right, this piece. This is what it looks like. Okay, so as a result of which you will get um, ISS plus two ISS, which is coming back if k equal to two, and then that whole thing will again go back to I two will become three ISS, and then it will come back. I'm just showing you like a, it doesn't work that way uh, because it will just you know really fast it will it will increase, and I'm going to come to that because this is called positive feedback. Hmm. 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 Why would voltage drop? Hmm. Hmm. Where is that current going? It's going here. It's going to go here, right? Now this is going to become three ISs. Hmm. Okay. So. The voltage at this point is decided by by this because you have really lifted that up to supply, you know, because you have provided a large differential. Hmm. 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 No, no, no. The drain voltage is not driving ISS. The gate voltage is driving ISS because the transistors are in saturation. Both transistor in saturation. Not, not in that transistor. That transistor is separate. Okay, that transistor is kept separate. Okay, I think maybe I, I understand uh, the confusion you are having. Uh, this transistor, okay, this transistor will always be connected to VB and it will continue happily carry ISS. Okay, this particular box, okay, that we have will have this particular circuit. Okay, agree. Okay. I think now you get it. I can see your face, and it will have this particular transistor. That transistor is going to allow you to do k times i two minus i one or i one minus i two. Okay, so this is something we call adaptive biasing, which is on demand. On demand, you provide the current whenever you need. Okay, and this particular technique was uh, invented by. De Grau. This was, uh, you know, 1982 June um, uh, JSCC, if I remember. Okay. Is it clear what I'm trying to do here? Um, but I, I still didn't explain. Um, is how do you draw schematic? Okay. So pay attention to that part. Hmm? Okay. So let's call this A B and let's call this C. Let's use the same colors. And D. Okay. Now, um, rather than drawing those lines the way I drew those complicated lines and make our life difficult, what you can do is you can also label these nodes. Okay. And here in this case, you will say, oh, this is going to be A and C. And this will be going to be B and D. Okay. So just by labeling those nets, you are actually creating a virtual um, implied connection. Now, uh, we generally do that. If you do this for every transistor, it's a mess because then you're just, you know, putting bunch of transistors and you're defining and the circuit will be totally unreadable. So, as humans, we like to see a pattern. Uh, so, we just want to see certain pattern that I can recognize. And I know how to recognize an op amp, I know how to recognize OTA, I know how to recognize current source, current source and all those things. So, those we will uh, kind of show them explicitly. But the connections which don't add much value. For example, a bias, if there is a bias connection hmm, that's coming, bias voltage is defined somewhere else and then it's coming, traveling somewhere else, you don't have to draw, draw, draw the line. You can just label that. So this particular method works very well. So if you see some circuit, then what you will do is you'll analyze the box first, what's going on in the box. And if you're a good designer, then you will, on that symbol, you will draw a picture. Okay, so you, you can draw a picture saying that what's going on inside this circuit. So you will say that, oh, this is going to be I2 minus I1 K times. It's coming out of this. 
if i2 is greater than i1 and if i2 is less than i1 then it's zero so the person saying going to trust you and say that okay i understand what he's doing or what she is doing inside the box and then that way you can quickly understand this degree. why are we doing all this stuff so that somebody else can criticize your schematics before the chip is taped out remember you want other people to criticize your schematics before the chip is taped out because after the tape out nobody can help you okay remember that so it's important to draw schematics in a very good fashion now let's talk about uh, this k business i mentioned to you if this is my delta v in which is the difference between the two sides and what is my i out divided by iss so if k is equal to 0 what does that mean what will be i out by iss if k equal to 0 1 it will be 1 so then the max will be 1 okay so this will be 1 and then your 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 transfer characteristics will look something like this okay so you will you will you will hit like this now if uh, k equal to 1 then um, when you are adding more current and and you are creating this positive feedback so then it will look something like this and if k equal to 2 then So you can see all this in the paper, k equal to 0. Hmm? And depending upon, um, you know, what you require, you can, you can choose the right value. Hmm? Uh, is the concept clear? Let me recap the concept again one more time. What are we doing? So this particular circuit, what we said is that it's a mod circuit. Hmm? The mod circuit will do if, if iy is greater than ix, okay then we will get iy minus ix times the scaling coefficient k at the output. But if iy is less than ix, hmm, then you will not get anything. The transistor M3 will be turned off. So you have to convince yourself about this one because once this is clear, then everything else will fall in place. All right. And we will have two instances, which means there will be two separate circuits. We will, we will put them in our, our schematic. So this is the one, let's say, let's say I call this left side circuit and this is the one on the right side, hmm? two separate circuits. And then I will flip the connections of that current I1 and I2 in them. So that way I will get the mod of I1 minus I2 all the time. Hmm? And uh, that gets multiplied by K, the scaling coefficient of the last transistor, so that on demand I can, I can pump in current and, uh, and this is the adaptively biased um, uh, OTA. Okay. Now let's, uh, 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 Fozan, what was your question? Won't we compromise on common mode gain? No, it will only come in that spot. Rest of the time, everything is turned off. Remember that, right? So, you know, when it's hurting, you know, you, you are dumping current, and you know you are compromising on some other issues which is okay because all i am trying to do is get as fast as possible to the to the final point and once i get into the zone then all the currents will shut off and you'll go back to your normal but it's a good question okay huh. any other thing bolo hmm hmm One of the? Okay, I got it. So, under normal operation, hmm, under normal operation, what is going to happen? Both M1 and M2, they will be pretty close to each other because op amp is, uh, so delta V is going to be very small hmm, with feedback, correct? So, then you will not have much current which will come into, you know, in that mode. This kicks in only when there is a shoot of uh, the voltage is certain. But excellent question, you know, because you are thinking, you are applying yourself.
Okay, thank you, Joel. Okay, all right. Let's move to the last uh, piece uh, that um, you know I want to talk about in the OPAM case, uh, and it's a very important ca case. I wanted to keep it at the end so that you will uh, remember this. It's called settling time. Hmm? So why is settling time important? Because we are using these OTAs in variety of applications, right? So for example, let's say you are doing an A to D converter. Hmm? Now A to D converter is uh, converting analog to digital in certain amount of time and you don't have forever. The clock rate is, you know, you want to keep it as high as possible. So then you have to settle within that time. Okay, that's the reason we want to settle faster. Okay. So let's take an example here. This is my load capacitor plus minus and this is V in of T and this is uh, V out of T. And what I'm going to draw here is, let's say you, you, you turn on the, your, your V in changes instantly like this, okay, then what happens? So what will, what will be the first thing that will happen? Let's say V in abruptly changes. Shivaji, what's the first thing that will happen? Let's say V out is 0 because the previous condition was V out was 0 and suddenly V in change. Current will? Yeah, yeah, we just learned what is that condition called? Slow. We will start slowing. So we will start slowing and the slowing business will continue till certain point. Okay. So right now I'm, I'm just kind of separating the two regions out because it's not as distinct as I'm showing you right now. So this will be my um, slowing piece and this is V out I am plotting and this is my time. So this is the time to slow and what is this decided by T slow? ISS divided by CL, that's what. So if you, if you had a better current, more current then it will go sharper, 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 okay. And we need to reach. Um, somewhere here, so after slowing um, is done, something like this, okay, so you will be settling and then we say so let's say this is one. 1 being some ratio, okay, you can take and then this will be 1 plus D and 1 minus D. D being, um, you know, to tolerance, error tolerance, the final value, percentage, how far off you are. I'll explain D in a minute. And like for example, in this particular case, I'm entering the zone of my error tolerance. I'll explain this just a second. And this is called T settling. Right. And typically when does that happen, this is approximately, you know, in our diff pair, it's root 2 VD sat. You remember the diff pair, um, if you go beyond root 2 VD sat, you know, one of the transistors takes over turn and the other transistor turns off. But once you start coming closer within root 2 VD sat, then you start getting our normal AC operation, okay. So, um, so that's what happens, okay. Now let's understand this, uh, this business, right. So, if let's consider a single pole op amp. OTA and the transfer function is AS is equal to A0 1 minus 1 plus S divided by P1. Okay. And then what would be our A of S will be in the, uh, the, the closed loop will be A of S closed loop gain will be A of S 1 plus A of S. I am talking about this particular circuit here. This particular circuit. Okay. Hmm. So this will be uh, equal to uh, A0, P1 divided, I'm just redistributing so that um, we can, I'm giving you the final result, okay, P1, A0 plus 1. This is something we have done before. Huh? No, no, that's what, uh, so, so let's say you have a diff pair. Hmm? 
Now you answer the question. What's the transfer function of the diff, diff pair? If you remember, it looks like this. We did this uh, a while ago and we said that, you know, this is within root 2 Vd sat, root 2 Vd sat minus. If your voltage is beyond root 2 Vd sat, uh, root 2 Vd sat is for that diff pair transistor, then they are either on or off. But if it comes within root 2 Vd sat, then both transistors are kind of adjusting to each other. Okay? Good. Thank you. Uh, so, um, uh, so that's why first, it's almost like a digital operation when when you when you apply a large voltage then one transistor just shuts off the other transistor uh, takes over carries the current and we go into slew mode and once they think uh, the voltages come closer then the slewing will ha huh, now the slewing is not necessary because the ac analysis ac part is lot faster so that will take over and then you will try to reach the final value hmm? okay so coming back what i am trying to say is that this is my ota and I am analyzing this particular situation. The OTA has one pole response, okay, which is A0 divided by 1 plus S over P1. And then uh, this is my closed loop response, A of S, is A S divided by 1 plus A S, and this is what it is going to look like. Now, let us say if we apply hmm, unit step. Uh, so, what is unit step input in Laplace domain? It is 1 over S, okay. So, we will apply that and we will see what happens. So, then your V out will be equal to S will be equal to A of S times V in of S. Hmm? Okay. So, this is A0 of A of S, small a s and um, V out by V in is capital A of S, which is the uh, closed loop transfer function. Hmm? Okay. So, this will become equal to um, 1 over S hmm, uh, times A0 P1 divided by S plus P1 A0 plus 1. And I think you have done some Laplace transform business, right, so far, signals and systems. All of you must have done some time in your life, okay. So, when you have this uh, particular type of, uh, you know, transfer function, what you do is you remove A0, A0 plus 1 out of the picture. And then you can uh, create these two uh, separate, just because we can easily understand. So, this is all algebra. Okay. I am just equivalently writing this and separating the terms. Okay. Now, we can uh, deal with this in time domain. We know how to deal with these two transfer functions, but we do not know how to deal with this particular one. So, we just separate it out and now we can deal each one of them separately. Okay. So, if I go back to time domain, P out of S to time domain, hmm. then what we will get is V out of T is equal to A0 divided by A0 plus 1. Hmm. And what is 1 over S again in time domain? Unit step. Okay, So, this will be UT. Hmm. And then what will be this piece? That will be exponential, uh, okay. So, this will become e to the power minus p1 a0 plus 1 times t. Hmm? This becomes our error now, if you will, okay. Because if, uh, if t equal to infinity if in this right side, what will you see? The final value will be equal to exactly what we desire, which is a0 divided by a0 plus 1. And uh, you, will, you will kind of exponentially, so this transfer function will look like this, you will start and you will kind of, expo I mean you asymptotically will reach the final value. So, if, if, uh, if our, um, uh, if we wait till t is equal to uh, infinity, right, so this is called tolerance. Now, um, you can say that what is our A0, very large typically, so we can make an approximation here. What is the approximation we can make here? that is equal to A0 divided by A0 plus 1, 1, okay. So, then uh, we can say my V out hmm, is equal to U of T minus E to the power minus P1 and uh, A0 plus 1 times T. Hmm. So, we call tau as a small signal uh, settling time. 
constant. So that is equal to 1 over P1 A0 plus 1. And we can also say that ah, close enough A0 is very large 1 we can ignore and this is going to be P1 A0. Hmm? And what is P1 A0? Now you have to connect the dot with what we learned long time ago. What is A, A0 is a DC gain and P1 is the pole, only pole in the location. So then if you remember, we did this, right? We did the single pole OTA and this was A0 and this was P1, okay? And here what happens, Parth? Gain, there is a, you know, gain bandwidth is constant over there, right? So then what is this frequency called? Unity gain frequency, omega u and that is equal to a0 p1 if you remember right i mean this is what we did a while ago hmm? that's our unity gain so this is also equal to 1 over omega unity gain hmm? so this is our gain bandwidth product okay i'm i'm bear with me for a few minutes because i'm trying to make a connection you know it, it may look like we are going all over the place uh, but coming back to actual implementation coming back to you know, uh, what we really uh, are trying to do. We are trying to do this uh, error, okay, this error D. What do we want this D to be? Do you want it to be 0? Yes? If it's 0, then how long will it take? It will take forever, right? So, we don't design, nobody designs for D equal to 0. We design it for something that's acceptable. So, for that depends on how many number of bits uh, you are trying to resolve, okay? So, uh, that's the connection that I would like you to make. You know, you never try to do, uh, so you say, oh, it's 0 0.1%, 0 0.01%, 0 0.001%, such kind of errors you say. And within that error, how, how long does it take for my single pole op amp to reach the final value? That's what we are trying to figure out. Hmm? So, uh, coming back to um, D, okay. So, let's say D equal to 0.01%. What does this mean? That means you are within 0.01% of the final value. If 100 was the final value, I am at, huh? if 1% 1 is 1, 0.01% is 0 0.01. If 100 is the final value, then I am within 0 0.01 of the final value, which is really accurate, right, you would think. So this, you can say, how do you, you put it in log and you will see suddenly what it means. 0 0.01 divided by 100 because it is percent, reciprocal of that. So this becomes, what is this, uh, 20 log? of 10000 and what is what is this number yeah joel 4 so this becomes 80 db okay now quick rule of thumb uh, 6 db is one bit okay why 6 db is one bit because you have one bit you are going to go either 0 or 1 right and there are two states so then that's factor of 2 and if you take ln of that, that will come out to be uh, 6 dB, right? So, this is 1 bit. So, 80 dB is, uh, we are really doing, you know, paper napkin analysis so that we can, I mean, you can go through the actual calculation and it will be slightly different, you know that, right? So, we divide this by 6 dB. So, 80 divided by 6 is equal to how much? Huh? Something like 13 uh, bits, if I remember. You will get 13 bits. So, if you have a 13 bit A to D converter, then you need to resolve within 0.01%, okay? Remember that. That's the connection I would like you to make. So this settling time, D and how long it's going to take, they are all connected together. That's the, that's the thing I would like you to remember. Hmm? So then in this case, our case, the settling time Ts is equal to minus tau times ln of T, hmm? which came from this particular equation. So in this case, it will be minus tau ln of uh, 0 0.0001 and so this will become 9.21 tau, okay. So what this is telling me is that if I want to resolve to 13 bits, okay, if I want to resolve to 13 bits, that means I need to settle to 0.01% uh, of the final value. I want to settle in that accuracy, okay. And for reaching that accuracy, it's going to take me how many time constants? 9.21 time constants. That's the connection I would like you to make. And all this stuff is valid only for 
one pole system. Remember, we did a one pole analysis. Okay. Let's say we want to do ADC. Um, this will take you a little bit longer um, because I'm, I'm making it sound trivial in the classroom, but you will have to go through it on your own. You have to do the math on your own so that you, you digest this completely. So you'll have to put some effort. Okay. So if you're designing an A2D converter, okay, and let's say uh, the Nyquist rate for that A2D converter is let's say 100 megahertz, okay, for whatever reason. So we are trying to do 100 megahertz A2D converter. Then how long do I have to resolve? Let's say I want, I'm running at 1 gigahertz. How long do I have? In seconds? Nano. Excellent. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh, giga is nano. Remember, na? Uh, uh, mega is micro, giga is nano. So if it's one gig, then you will get one nanosecond. And if you get 100 megahertz, then you get, huh? One gig gives you one nanosecond. 100 megahertz gives you what? I'm just dropping the rate by 10. So it'll be 10 nanoseconds. Huh? I think you because megahertz, you're connecting the dots of micro, which is fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Richa. So this is going to give me 10 nanoseconds. Agreed? So within 10 nanoseconds, I need to do everything, all my business. So if it's 10 nanosecond, let's say the whole 10 nanosecond is taken to settle to the final value, okay? Of course, it takes, uh, you know, you have to split it into different, different, but the, right now, let's keep it simple. So our settling time requirement is 10 nanoseconds, which is equal to how many taus? 9.21 tau. Hmm? So then you can, can somebody tell me what tau is? Let's say 10 tau. So then tau will be 1 nanosecond, no? hmm. agree? So if it's one nanosecond, hmm, um, then uh, what is my unity gain frequency? So we are deriving the specs now, okay? So unity gain frequency of our op amp needs to be one over two pi tau, which is, uh, can somebody tell me what this number is? Two pi times uh, one nanosecond. 159 megahertz. Is that correct? Can double check? Uh, let's say 160 megahertz, close enough, right? Okay. So, uh, what we said is that we want to settle within 0.01 percent. Hmm? That's my D. And what was that for? That was for our 13-bit uh, ADC. Okay. And then, uh, what was the sample rate? FS was 100 megahertz. Okay. And that gave me F unity gain was how much? 160 megahertz. Is that clear? I mean, they are not related directly, but they are related based on the calculations that we did. Okay. So our OTA needs to have that unity gain frequency hmm, when you design. So you can, you can kind of go through this analysis and let's say you want to do 20 bits. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then it will be 13.82 tau and this will go to 220 megahertz. This is my UGF. So what this is telling me is that your op amp has to be really good. It has to be super fast. Okay. Is that clear? So again, you know, bits, number of bits gives you relation to with what? The D error, the settling band, how close you have to be at the output. Okay. And that will tell you that how many taus do I need to wait. Okay, that tau will define how fast can you run this circuit. Hmm? Okay, all right. And tau was again unity gain bandwidth of our. Um, I mean, it's related to unity gain bandwidth of our OT. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now uh, this is done for single pole. Remember, hmm? In reality, man, single pole doesn't exist. Okay, you always get two poles. Okay, so if you have two poles. If you do a good job, right, then it's going to look like this. So I'll keep that for homework. I'm just kidding, okay? Something like this, okay? So there is an excellent paper by Howard Yang, and I'll tell you Howard's story, very funny story, because we studied together and Dave Allstart. Dave Allstart is my advisor uh, during PhD. I just spoke with him on the weekend. And he shared a story about Howard, um, which was very funny. I was doing my master's and Howard was doing his PhD at the same time at OSU. So uh, what Howard found that after getting the chip fabricated uh, is um, that 
if he if he has an op amp something like this okay conventional wisdom is that if you slow down the op amp hmm, if you slow down the op amp you think the settling time will increase right uh, that's what but he was saying that oh if i increase the capacitor hmm, if i keep increasing the capacitor the damn thing runs faster okay that's what he found in the lab the conventional wisdom before howard arrived at the scene in the scene meaning before he started doing uh, his phd was okay you have to if you have to settle fast then you have to leave your phase margin uh, 45 degrees good enough as of so that because you 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 will quickly go and you'll settle that's what he was thinking all right but howard was doing experiment in the lab on his chip and the first day he found that you put in the cap and he bump up the cap the it was settle faster i mean that doesn't happen that many times in life right when you try to degrade something things improve generally if you try to degrade something everything degrades and if you do something good that also degrades right in the lab so uh, here in this case it was like a shocking thing so he went to professor allstart professor also say you are full of crap and then um, you know this went on for 2 3 days and eventually he went to the lab and he actually saw so then after simulations he found out what was going on was this so what was going on was you would settle something like this right and if you try to make the circuit slower so originally if the band is here okay then you are settling somewhere far out there but if the band is here and if i am settling and if i let's say hit something like this now suddenly i am settling within this time okay so i'm slowing down the peaks are reducing and you are once the peak reduces from the top band you enter the zone which is your comfort zone so uh, thoda sa complex hai but uh, i just wanted to share the story and the summary of the story which you will use all the time okay the summary of the story is here is your normalize settling time and here i have phase margin so howard did the the analysis for two pole system and did the entire analysis that what i showed you um in his phd thesis and you know really goes down deep uh, in deep and then he found that you know it looks like this something like this and then i'm kind of trying to replicate this and this is like let's say 0.1% and this is a uh, point uh, 0.01% point 0.1% something like this and he found that the sweet spot is somewhere 60 to 70 phase margin okay so after howard's paper the entire world started changing hmm? that we should design op amp for 60 to 70 degrees of phase margin okay okay the next thing uh, we are going to talk about is something called power supply rejection ratio i i talked about uh, this uh, before uh, but i want to i want you to be able to analyze the circuit okay because earlier we just said oh what's again on the uh, power supply this and that right so you have um, this is your circuit and let's say this is your plus minus hmm? we in we out and let's say this is vdd and ground okay so uh, what can happen is the supply noise can be anywhere on the vdd or ground now there is only one output node correct and that one output either can be driven by the differential input or anything else you don't have a way of distinguishing remember that so if there is noise on the power supply and it shows up here you cannot distinguish that compared to our inputs okay so it's a corruption either if there is a noise on ground or supply and if it shows up at the output we are in trouble remember so we would like to reject that particular uh, noise as much as possible as a circuit design now why do we reject that because we have to you don't exist on a on a chip right you you don't exist on your own right you are existing with whole bunch of people who are generating you know digital noise right so this is your analog piece and this is your whole bunch of digital stuff and digital people are what are they doing they are banging the to supply or ground supply or ground constantly and what will that do that will um so let's say you have a supply uh, and you have an inductor let's say and let's say i have supplied this to analog and to digital that current the switching current can go almost in amperes 
and that is flowing through that bond wire which has an inductance. So what will happen here? You will get L di by dt. So you get a really a lot of noise on, on this thing and that is what is being supplied to the analog circuit. Of course, we don't do that, you know, uh, you know, analog guys are very demanding when it comes to, you know, quality of their circuits and their performance, right? They say this is not acceptable. You guys, you have your own, um, own supply and we will have our own supply. Still, because you're putting in so much switching noise, some of it will capacitively, inductively, somehow the or the other will show up at your, at your analog circuit and it will basically destroy your performance. Okay, because you're trying to do microvolt type of uh, circuits and then here is like a, a volt signal which is going back and up and down, right? So, um, uh, what we try to do is we want to make sure that our PSRR is good and if PSRR is defined as ADM divided by APS. So, APS is the gain from any particular supply voltage node, for example, VRD or ground to the output. Is that clear? You remember the common mode gain part? So we, uh, uh, Fozan was bringing that up, right? Common mode gain. So they, that was a common mode voltage to the output. Output. So similarly here from supply voltage to the output. So you figure that gain out and that is basically using your Kirchhoff current law, voltage law, whatever circuit analysis. Okay. The circuits don't look familiar anymore because you are trying to figure out gain from supply and ground. But uh, you can use some... Um, hand wavy analysis to get a feel for it, which is what I want to give you. At the end, you have to simulate hmm, to get a better feel because it changes over frequency and all those things. So those complex things. But, but you need to get a zeroth order idea of how this circuit is going to look like, which is what I want to give you. And what would you like the PSR to be, large or small? Large. Because the differential mode gain should dominate and uh, the, the power supply gain should be as small as possible. Okay, so um, the, the simplest example I can give you is the following. Let's say you have an OTA and let's say it's in the feedback like this. Okay, and let's say you have V in. And so what we do in simulation land is we put in AC sources. On uh, both either supply or ground, um, you know, depending upon where you uh, Okay, and this is my plus minus, this is uh, V out and this is my V in. Okay, so we can calculate the gain from, I mean you can put your circuit in this mode and you can measure uh, what's happening at the output and we can, let's see what happens, right. So then here in this case, V out will be equal to APS, which is the power supply gain due to VDD times VDD, hmm, which is this particular uh, small VDD. AC um, plus uh, ADM V plus minus V minus. Hmm. ADM is a differential gain. So this will be APS. So this is a small uh, VDD, not the DC. Hmm. And here V plus is, uh, is equal to 0 that I am applying and this is my V out. Hmm? So then you can see that V out divided by VDD hmm, is equal to APS VDD divided by 1 plus ADM. Hmm? Again, we ignore the 1 and this becomes APS VDD divided by ADM. And what is that equal to? Is it PSR? Reciprocal of PSR. Hmm? Okay. So what I have done is I have taken your op amp, put it in unity gain feedback and then I am only applying uh, AC at the supply VDD and V in is 0, I am not applying anything. And of course the op amp will do both, it will have differential mode component as well as the common mode component. So this is equal to 0, I did not apply anything because you are simulating this circuit and trying to figure it out. And you can quickly tell um, from the gain V out by A VDD you can figure out the PSR. So this is a very simple way to do this. Now, extremely important thing to remember hmm? uh, because almost 90% of the people miss this. So as my students, you should have this knowledge because you can shine. 
uh, whenever such opportunity comes, right? What you really need to remember is this up amp is going to have some supply voltage, uh, some bias voltage, okay? Now those bias voltages are also coming from some other place and that's also has a VDD somewhere, okay? So what people typically do huh, is if there is a bias voltage required for this op-amp, they put a DC voltage, okay? Do you see ideal DC voltage? And that's a big no-no because it will give you garbage results, okay? You have to make sure that the entire platoon is included huh, of all your circuits when you are measuring power supply rejection ratio. You can split, you cannot say that, oh, the bias voltage, I'll deal with it separately and my op-amp, I'll be deal with it separately. So, everything that's connected to your op-amp needs to be taken into account. Okay, remember that. Hmm? Okay, so simplest one I'm going to tell you is this one. So let's say this is my VDD and let's say my V out hmm? and this is uh, M3, M4, correct? And this is M1 and M2. So how do we analyze this thing? Hmm? So think about it this way, uh, I'm only applying, so I would ground both the inputs for a diff pair, okay? And I'm only going to apply signal at VDD, all right? So I'm applying signal here, let's use a different color um, so that it's clear, something like this, okay? Now, because M1 and M2, what's the state of M1 and M2? Huh? Cut off, AC it's right in the center. Uh, so both are conducting equally, right? Because I'm not applying sign, I'm not applying voltage. Huh? No, this zero is like a AC zero. Uh, some DC bias is there because circuit is actually working. Hmm? So then both the transistors will conduct equally, correct? And the current will be, what will be the current here? ISS divided by two, both sides, right? So it will be equal. So then the VGS here is, VSG is set up on both sides, right? So what do you think will happen here? So it's like a battery at that point. Current is fixed. Correct? So the VGS cannot, VSG cannot change. Current is ISS divided by 2, so v, VSG cannot change. So whatever garbage is appearing here will show up right here. Are you able to see that? And same thing will show up here. It will show up at both sides. Correct? So what is our uh, PSRR? What's the gain from VDD? So this APS VDD. What will that be? 1. Uh, straight away it shows up. So equal to 1. And what is our gain? ADM? Huh? Huh. Bolo. Huh. GMR out. Close enough, right? Uh, divide by 2 over a but I think conceptually you know it's GMN times R out at the output. Agreed? So what is my PSRR then? GMN divided by R out divided by 1. Okay? Thank you.